Good morning. Thank you for enjoying it with a six pack, the Scotty six pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kendrick Summers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter at Kendrick Summers and follow the podcast at Scotty six pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports today. We're back talking Wisconsin women's hockey, not for a full hour. We already broke down the win over the St. Lawrence Saints over the weekend in real time, just after it happened. But we are previewing the Frozen Four. Wisconsin is two wins away from a national championship. We, and we got our good friend from 1070 The Game and iHeartRadio, Noah Clark, back with us to break it all down. The man inside the radio booth. You know, intermission interview voice of the Badgers. No, Clark, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Frozen Four weekend is here. Let's go get title number eight, Kedrick. I'm, I'm got a good feeling about this. I got a good feeling. Badgers rolling into New Hampshire, looking really good, and about to go play some toothpaste, if you know what I mean. Uh, yes, Wisconsin plays Colgate in. The national semifinal, that game this Friday, uh, the, what was that date? It is Tuesday, the 22nd. Um, that will be the second of the two national semifinal games. The first is Ohio State Clarkson. Um, that game is scheduled for 3 p.m. Eastern on your NCAA tournament opening weekend Friday, streaming on ESPN Plus. Wisconsin plays at 6.30 p.m. out in Durham, New Hampshire. Um the first thing that jumps off the page when you look at this Frozen Four matchup is we got the four best teams in the country. These are probably the four best teams in the country all season long. Number one through four in the seeds, number one through four in the pairwise, number one through four in the NPI. How exciting is it to have, I mean, a Frozen Four with, I think, what are clearly the four true national contender, national title contenders from this season? You know, it's it's going to be pretty competitive. And all four teams, you know, fought their way to get to this point. Wisconsin, Colgate, Clarkson, Ohio State, all these teams have proven in their conferences that they are dominant and they know how to win and they know what it takes to win. And a lot of these teams, you know, have already hanged some banners. Some may be still looking for a banner here to be risen in their arena, in their barn. and. What what better way? What better? What more could you ask from this, Kedrick? This is going to be some exciting stuff. We've got four really, really good programs going at it this weekend, and one of these teams is going to come away with some sort of hardware, and not only just bragging rights, but bragging rights for at least a whole five to six months. On top of that, coming the recognition as well. Yep, Wisconsin, as as always, operating at, at a level matched by almost no one in in the sport. Um, you know, they, they are the the premier program in the WCHA with Ohio State trying to take that mantle from them. The two teams that have the two most recent national titles, but Clarkson here, the the first East coast power to emerge in the sport after the Midwest dominated it for the first you know, decade of its existence. And you have a team, like you said, Colgate trying to win its first national title. All the other teams here have at least one uh, Ohio state has the one Clarkson has a few of their own Colgate trying to get their first there in their second frozen four. Last time Colgate was in the frozen four defeated Wisconsin in Overtime, double overtime back in 2018, ended up falling in the national title game to their conference rival, Clarkson. So we have the, the two top teams in the two top conferences, the WCHA and the ECAC. Really exciting as we get potentially a, a rematch of conference title game in either the ECAC or the WCHA uh, tournament overall. Noah, when you when you were thinking about the the matchups Wisconsin has had recently o over Colgate, uh, that's the 2018 Frozen Four, and then last year Wisconsin played the Red Raiders in the regional final in Colgate's barn to get to the Frozen Four. What are your 
initial impressions of Wisconsin getting a, another crack at, at Colgate uh, for, for the third time in the all-time series history? Well, it starts, you know, with Colgate. Colgate's got to be feeling pretty, you know, frustrated that they've played this team twice and they've lost, you know, and, and they've played this team twice and they haven't been able to really get them. Or, and last year they had a chance to get them and it was at their home rink and they lost that game and not looking pretty good for the Red Raiders. On the other side for Wisconsin, this is more of a favorable opponent for them. They know what this team is. They know, you know, their strengths, what their weaknesses are, what styles of play that they have. And for the Badgers, you know, on top of that, the stakes are high. I mean, the stakes are extremely high. And the last two matchups can really show for it too. The stakes were really high in both of those two matchups. So they know really what to expect coming into this game and coming in against Colgate in the Frozen Four. The, these two teams are, are used to playing in these high stakes matchups and right now are playing really good hockey in these high stakes games. Uh, Colgate lost its two games to Clarkson in the regular season, but then won in the conference tournament championship. Wisconsin lost three times in a row to Ohio State in, in its first three matchups in the regular season, won in the regular season finale, and then beat them in the conference tournament title game. What, if anything, does the the recent high level play of these of these two teams knocking off several NCAA tournament teams lately uh, tell you about you know the quality of hockey game we're going to get on Friday night? It's going to be, I think, a very interesting dynamic too with how the scoring is going to be. You know, are we going to mm. see it be a high scoring game? Are we going to see it be more of a low scoring first goal, you know, first goal wins type mentality mm -hmm. or are we, you know, is it going to be a blowout? I mean, these two teams both offensively really, really, really good. Wisconsin, one of the top offenses in the country. They've been one of the top offenses all year. Colgate third best offense in the country in total mm -hmm. offense this year. These are two teams that know how to score. And I, you know, and I know that we could see a lot from both of these teams defensively that could play well. But man, these two offenses are rolling and they're rolling at the perfect time. And I feel like we're not going to be, we're not going to be seeing these kind of, you know, we're not going to be seeing this kind of game that we saw last week at against St. Lawrence, where it was a one nothing game for most of it. It's going to be very high scoring. It's going to be probably, and this is just throwing it out there. Probably it's going to be 13 goals combined, maybe a seven, six game at the end. Now that I'm saying that, but that's the way that both of these two teams play both offensive, both really know how to score and both really you know, have been good in both of their conferences offensively this year. They are, and they, they do both score a lot. Uh, Chris Wells, the head coach over at St. Lawrence, Wisconsin's regional final round opponent kind of noted that in his, uh, po post game presser after the, their loss to Wisconsin uh, over, over the weekend, St. Lawrence, that their head coach saying, we kind of knew the, the kind of game we were going to have to play against Wisconsin to give them a chance to win because we have a team that plays a lot like this back, back in our conference in the ECAC and the team he named was Colgate Two two teams that have a lot of speed, a lot of skill teams that like to score and, and can do it quite a bit. Um, the big difference here, I think is who, which, which goaltender shows up and, Ava McNaughton has been excellent so far, 25 save shutout in the NCAA tournament. But I wonder just how much St. Lawrence can have its, its goaltender, Kelly Osborne, show up in this one. Look, for all we've said about Wisconsin, you know, not having the best defense all year, the, the goals against average, the save, the save percentages in these two teams, it's really, really similar. And Wisconsin, I mean, there there is nobody that rivals Wisconsin scoring except for Ohio state. That's, that's basically it. Um, 
So if Ava McNaughton shows up, I think Wisconsin wins this game. How do you feel about the, the true freshman goaltender's chances in this Frozen Four playing on the biggest stage of, of her life so far? You know, when, we, when we're going back to like the final face-off and after that Minnesota game, even after the Ohio State series, I was like, you know, I wasn't, I was sitting here, you know, not feeling pretty confident about Ava McNaughton and just the way that she played because, you know, she had a rough outing, but they still won the final face off, which is really huge. And they were able to get into the dance, even on, even though they were already in, they still got the championship off the final face off. But after watching her game against St. Lawrence, I felt pretty confident that she could, you know, that she handled herself really well. And, I think that she'll do phenomenal against Colgate. I think the defense, you know, at some points during the game last week did struggle, but a lot of times you saw that they were very disciplined and they were very on point and not giving up those, you know, not really going towards the puck and not really, you know, sucking in where then it's all of a sudden you've got this defense, you know, you know, you've got a skater wide open for an easy backdoor pass. And even with that, Ava McNaughton came in and played lights out. And I've said this before, mm-hmm. when your defense doesn't step up, your goaltender needs to step up. And if your goaltender steps up for you, massive, massive, massive confidence can boost through your whole team. And Ava did that last weekend and it boosted so much confidence. I think for a lot of Badger fans, and I think for me as well, because seeing her in, in Minneapolis a few weeks ago, didn't really think that, you know, there was much there to be, you know, satisfied about after that St. Lawrence game, I felt pretty confident, you know, that, she could come into this game and really play a, a great performance against this Colgate team. I I certainly hope so because they got they got some folks o- over there who can absolutely score. Uh, the the top goal scorers in in the country by points are of course Kirsten Sims with seventy four at, at Wisconsin. She's now up to a full. Two points per game on the season. Do the right thing. (laughs) Casey O'Brien with 71 points of her own. Abby Murphy in Minnesota with 62. We'll talk about her in just a second. Uh, But then Danielle Serdachny at at Colgate with 61 points on the season. Tied with Wisconsin's Britta Curl for the fourth most points in the country. Uh, Noah, you know, save for the elite play of, of Ava McNaughton, what is a big key here for Wisconsin to keep the red Raiders off the scoreboard. It's going to come down to along besides David McNaughton. It's going to come down to this young defense. They are a very young defensive team and they were very disciplined in this game against St. Lawrence. Mm -hmm. That has to show up once again in this game against Colgate. And potentially if they play Ohio state or Clarkson, they're one of the teams that I think you even said, Kedrick could be a little bit concerning, because their defense this year hasn't been all, you know, all worldly. And mm-hmm. you look at a lot of the teams that are in this, you know, in this frozen four, a lot of them defensively play really, play really sound and play mm-hmm. really well. You look at even just look at the top 10 or the top five. Wisconsin, I, this is kind of nitpicky, but Wisconsin's mm-hmm. not in the top five in total defense. They are sixth. Ohio State, Colgate, and Clarkson are all in the top five in total defense. This is one of the concerns that I think I will have for Wisconsin is their defensive play. Can they be smart? Can they be disciplined? Can they not get into the penalty box and have their defense out there for long shifts? Like I'm looking at you, KK Harvey as well, (laughs) because there's a couple times where she went to the box for no reason. And because of that, their defense kind of was left out on an island. KK Harvey is exactly who I think the difference maker here is uh, because you have two high scoring offenses. You have two pretty solid defenses, but the the difference there is KK Harvey did not play the entire season. So she seems to be getting back up to the top of her game in uh, midweek interviews today. As we're recording on Tuesday, Mark Johnson talked about the fact that he thinks, you know, KK is getting she, she's playing better now than she has all year long. And part of that is probably because she is her confidence back was what coach Mark Johnson said. 
because when you come back from injury and a lot of times the, these young players, they don't have experience really getting injured before and missing extended time. You come back and you get nervous. You get nervous about re-injuring yourself. And so you have to learn to play without that anxiety of getting re-injured. And Coach Mark Johnson says that, you know, KK is playing at the top of her game now. And I think that's going to be big for, for a defense that needs all the help that I can get. And it needs its best defender out there. It needs her not in the penalty box um, for punching players uh, down behind the play, particularly uh, against this Colgate offense, which has the most power play goals in the entire country. The second best power play percentage in the country, just a or two tenths of a percentage point behind Minnesota for the best power play percentage in the country. So obviously the best power play remaining here on the season should be really fun. Noah, any, any other big special teams takeaways from the Colgate Wisconsin matchup leading up to the frozen four? I think it's going to come down to with that power play. It's going to come down to if Kirsten Sims can get very active in this, in this special teams unit. And when Wisconsin's on the power play. Yes. When Wisconsin's on the power play with when Kirsten Sims and Britta curl and Lisa Eden are at least out there. <laughs> it, it's, it's a very good group, but mm -hmm. last weekend wasn't as active as, you know, we, we, they weren't as active as, you know, we had seen them in the past few weeks. This is kind of a game now where they really have to step up and they really have to shine. And mm -hmm. They've shined their best on the power play this year. I mean, Lacey Eden's been phenomenal. Kirsten Sims and Britta Curl both have also been phenomenal on the power play. And this is a Colgate unit that is, you know, just doesn't let teams really, doesn't let teams really, you know, take advantage of the penalty kill. They're third in the country in penalty kill. Wisconsin, one of the top power play units. This is going to be something where if you're the Badgers, you have to take advantage and you have to capitalize. And it comes from your three best players on that line. And it comes from those. It comes from 27, 6, and 17. They have to be active all over the puck on that special teams. And they just got to keep firing their shots when, when, when given the opportunity. They do. And... Lacey Eden, uh, she she is a player who absolutely knows uh, to just keep firing her shots, of course. Uh, that, that win over Minnesota in the final face-off semifinals, she scored the game-winning goal in overtime on, uh, I believe it was her 10th shot on goal of the game, uh, a player unafraid to shoot. In the regional final over, over St. Lawrence, Layla Edwards had a pair of goals. Uh, of course, um, Casey O'Brien scored in the opening seconds, 16 seconds into that game. Um, Wisconsin won that one for nothing. That fourth goal came from Sarah Wozniewicz. She was She also looked like she had another goal for a second there that got disallowed. Um, it was her first goal in two months. And sometimes you need someone to step up who hasn't been a, a big contributor for you all year, but in playoff hockey, one and done, you need a big goal from one of your role players. Noah, if you're looking at any one of these, you know, lesser known players, not our Patty Cas finalists, not, not the captain who is scoring that big goal for the Badgers this weekend, uh, who doesn't exist, uh, as a 60 or 70 point scorer. You know, it's the two that you talked about. It's Layla Edwards and it's Sarah Wozniewicz. And Woz, at the start of the season, was on pace for career highs this year in points. And had a little bit of a dip, had due to some injury, didn't play, you know, for some games. Came back, really wasn't herself at the top level. And I think if, he, if she had stayed healthy, she would have easily passed career highs this year in points. She was just on fire. She's a very good defensive player. Very good, you know, pressure, you know, just pressure. Same with Maddie Wheeler, too. Like, Maddie Wheeler mm -hmm. and her, when both of those two are on the ice at the same time, it is very frustrating to generate any sort of rhythm because those two just frustrate the living daylights out of out of skaters. And Waz, I think, could be a huge part in this series, or excuse me, not in the series, in this game against Colgate. She really impressed me last week. Just the way that she was gritty and was tough, did not let anything phase through her. And then Layla Edwards. Layla Edwards, been really on a tear these last few weeks. 
yep. been a Buckeye killer in the last yeah. two in the last two games against Ohio State. She scored at least two goals in both of them, and then in this game against St. Lawrence, she got I believe two goals against St. Lawrence and mm-hmm. the Saints. Yep, and and. I'm telling you, she's she's right now on a hot streak. When you have a person who's right now on a hot streak peaking at the perfect time, chances are she may get it. She may have the opportunity to, you know, score one in this game against Colgate. Those are the two that I think definitely could change the tide. I, I would also add Maddie Wheeler as well because it's a senior. Her last year potentially with this team, she's worked really hard as a defensive player, not only there, but as an offensive scorer as well. Give me, give me a Marianne Picard for a sneaky goal here. Uh, she hasn't, she hasn't scored in a month, but her last goal came against the Gophers. Um, she got a shot on goal over the weekend against St. Lawrence. Lawrence tallied an assist. Give me a sneaky Marianne Picard anytime goal scorer on your uh, book that lets you bet on uh, <laughs> Wisconsin women's <laughs> hockey games. Um, just throwing one out there. Um, Noah, before we move on to our other semifinal and potential national championship game, any final burning thoughts on the matchup with the Colgate Red Raiders for Wisconsin to open the Frozen Four? I think it's going to be very interesting what Wisconsin, what Mark Johnson's lineup is going to be. He's Mm -hmm. He's changed the lineup several times, and I'm curious what he will do for this game. And... Because last week he, he he switched it up a bit. He mixed in some second liners with the first liners. Then in the game against Ohio State in the LeBon series, it was all underclassmen. He had all mm-hmm. sophomores playing in that situation. Now mm-hmm. here we get to the Frozen Four. What's his lineup going to be? Is he going to go more experienced in the, in the first line and mix you know some scores in there? as well or is he going to be more you know younger and he's going to go with the younger faster skaters that can turn the corner and be able to generate some you know some shots on goal very curious what mark johnson's going to do with this lineup and just really wondering what his thoughts are against colgate that's really that's really where i'm leaving it at right there Will be fun to watch. I, I think if what you're doing, it, it works. You, you don't mess with it. I, I think he rolls with the lineup that he has. Kirsten Sims, Casey O'Brien, Layla Edwards right now are are a a better line than anybody has in the entire country right now, quite quite frankly. They, they are playing that good. Uh, let's move to the opposite side of the bracket here. Number one, Ohio State. Number four, Clarkson. Ohio State did not take getting kind of blasted by Wisconsin very nicely. They beat (laughs) Noah Clark's frozen four pick Minnesota Duluth nine, nothing to open the NCAA tournament. Uh, Clarkson did not have the same path. Clarkson required four overtimes. The second longest game in this tournament's history to defeat the Minnesota Golden Gophers and Brad Frost, the head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers now has to sit at 499 wins for the entire off season. As he waits <laughs> to get his 500th in the season opener, brutal uh, for, for one Brad Frost, but Noah, your, your two, your big takeaways uh, from, from those two semi or regional final matchups, giving us this Clarkson, Ohio state, national semifinal first of all how the heck did minnesota blow that i just think that's very funny very well they blew minnesota they blew their last two games but brad frost was on the precipice of 500 and like and he leading, blew both of them leading late oh, of course we talked about on this on this show wisconsin scored with uh 8.8 seconds remaining in regulation and then beat minnesota in overtime in the wcha final face-off semifinals to beat minnesota against Clarkson before it, we had to go four overtimes. Minnesota was leading until a Clarkson goal to tie it with about three 30 left. That also went in off of a funny bounce. I remember mm-hmm. us all, all us all watching that in the press box there. How absurd, how absurd that that had to happen to Minnesota. Um, brutal, brutal way to end the season. 
Yeah. And we don't even need to talk about Ohio State. You know, that 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 <laughs> pick was just that was just bad on my part. I'm just gonna eat that one right there. But uh yeah, Clarkson, what a fight that they had to just, you know, stay keep their season alive and just be able to, you know, force, you know, four overtimes against the Golden Gophers. And now here they are sitting back in the frozen four going up against Ohio State. And this should be very, very fun, Kendrick. I, I'm curious what your thoughts of this are, are for these two teams. You have, like, obviously both top-level teams in, in offense and defense, but Ohio State is much more of a, a team with, with a great offense compared to Clarkson, which, which is a team with a much better defense. Uh, there is some split there compared to th this matchup with Wisconsin-Colgate, which are both pretty much, like, high flying teams, pretty solid defenses. Um, but Ohio state, Wisconsin, like we've talked about, I think over the last like three games, both of these teams have played, they have flip flopped being the number one and number two offenses in the country by goals per game. Ohio state currently sits at number one, uh, but that was not true prior to last weekend. Um, meanwhile, you have a, a Clarkson defense that is just awesome. Uh, that, that is constantly stopping folks from scoring, that that team is really really good. Uh, I am going to butcher her last name, but Michelle Michelle Pizinchek. I, I don't know. I'm I'm awful. Uh, I'm so sorry. Is fantastic. A, a super high save percentage, but it's not like Ohio State has a porous defense by any means. Of course, we have waxed poetic about Reagan Kirk at times on this show and how great she is. Um. That's, I mean, my initial reactions for these two teams should be an interesting, uh, you know, styles make fights, uh, to borrow some, some boxing phraseology here. And I think that's what this one is all about is figuring out who's, who's going to dominate the pace in this game. Not that Clarkson doesn't have top end talent, right? They go and get everybody from Ontario and Quebec. Um, they, they got some people who can, who can score the puck out there, but what do you think about the, the fight? of the two opposing styles a little bit here, Noah, who, who do you think is going to be able to control this one? Oh man. At first glance, I think it's going to be Ohio state. You, yeah. when we get these, you know, it's going to be one of those games, you know, where it's kind of an unstoppable force versus an Im immovable object. Mm -hmm. And if we're looking at just by the eye test, by controlling the pace of the game, I think it's going to be Ohio state, Ohio state, whenever they've controlled, whenever they've played their game, it's been really hard for teams to get them out of their game. Wisconsin is a great example of that. Wisconsin did make it interesting against Ohio State in the first matchup at Lebon. But then after that, Ohio State just flipped the switch and they are and their pace went from, you know, medium to, oh my gosh, this is incredibly fast. And Wisconsin couldn't stop it. And Clarkson from watching them against Minnesota, they they played really sloppy. You know, they played really sloppy mm. at some points during the game. When they when they got the opportunity to try and go and tie it, they did. But Ohio State this year, offensively, you look at the the talent that they have in this team. They they know how to play at a good pace. They've done it all season long, where they've really not got out of rhythm. And Clarkson in a few games this year, they've got out of rhythm at some points this year. Maybe they want to, they lost a game that they probably should have won. But if I'm looking at just the tempo, mm -hmm. I think Ohio state controls it. I think the Buckeyes right now are, are rolling. And I, we've said this a lot on this show today, rolling, <laughs> but like Ohio state is, is really rolling. I mean, they, they do not slow down and their tempo is fast and Clarkson. I just don't think can keep up with that pace that Ohio state has. Yeah, I think that is right. Ohio state right now. And this is what scares me about a potential national championship rematch is they, man, that team, it just is on another level. When, when it is on that nine Oh win over Duluth is crazy. That, that team outscored Duluth 25 to two this season combined in their six matchups, 25 to two. And in just a week's span outscored Duluth 14, nothing. Um, 
maybe that's just a bad matchup for, for the Bulldogs. I'm not sure. Uh, but that, that Buckeyes team just has a, a ridiculous, ridiculous offense. It feels so hard to slow it down. I, I have a hard time seeing Clarkson able to keep up with it. It re- reminds me of a, a quote from St. Lawrence coach Chris Wells at the end of Wisconsin's regional final against them, which was we could only hold them off for so long. Yeah. That the the Chris the Chris Wells performance in that game as a coaching look, he's a really good coach. That that is a program that they they have lifted quite high from where it was a few years ago. Um, for them to hold Wisconsin at bay for as long as they did with just that one Oh lead out of the gate, stopping a ton of shots, uh, credit to them. It feels like this might go the same kind of way here in the frozen four for Clarkson, where they are just only going to be able to hold an, an Ohio state team that, has no problems putting up a, a nine goal spot in a regional final. This isn't like the regional finals of late. This isn't Ohio State putting up nine goals against a new hot team. This is Ohio State putting up a nine nothing effort against an NCAA tournament team from the WCHA. It just feels like if anybody's going to beat Ohio State this year, I don't know that Clarkson is the right team for them to go and do it. A- am I crazy, or do you think Colgate or Wisconsin ends up matching up just a little bit better against Ohio State? Honestly, I, I think was you know Colgate or Wisconsin matches equally better with the yeah. Ohio State Buckeyes, and, and I just think also to Wisconsin slightly, I think has the advantage over Colgate to to mm. play Ohio State just because these two teams have met already before, and Ohio State and Wisconsin, I think, are similar. Their styles are so similar. And Clarkson, I, I just it, it's very hard for me to see Clarkson, you know, be able to hang with the Buckeyes. Again, like I, I like watching Ohio State this season, they just, you know, outskate teams to death. And they just mm-hmm. really do not, you know, let up. And Clarkson this year has not been a team that has really done that where they've outskated teams to death. They play slow. They really try to control it at first and then try to, you know, work it in and to get that open skater for an easy shot. I I just, you know, I I just don't take, I just don't take Clarkson as a team that could win this matchup. I think their defense is great. I think goaltending for them is great, but if I'm looking at a complete team, Ohio state's complete team. And Colgate and Wisconsin, I think also two very complete teams on the other end. Clarkson, very good defensive team, not a complete team at all. I think I agree with your point that Clarkson might not be a complete team enough just from, and maybe that phrasing is too harsh, but maybe just they don't have the top end scores to compete with a Hannah Bilka, a a, a, a Joy Dunn, the, the folks on, Ohio state's roster that at times can just score at will McKenna Webster, Kiara Zanin, that that team just has so many scores, just like a Wisconsin team does just feels like sometimes you, you need someone to go and get you a bucket. I don't know that there's somebody on Clarkson's roster who you can just say, go and get us a bucket. And so that's why I think if we're going to see, uh, an Ohio state team, not advanced to the national semifinal. It's going to require quite an upset, but otherwise I think we're seeing basketball on ice to continue the metaphor in the national title game between two very high paced teams, whether that be Ohio state and Clark's or Ohio state and Colgate or Ohio state and Wisconsin. One of the two, I think, look, I think Wisconsin guts it out, but it would not surprise me at all to see Colgate in the national title game. Uh, Noah, let's let's play on the hypothetical here. Wisconsin, Ohio State, round six today uh, on Tuesday at midweek interviews. KK Harvey, Shayla Edwards, they said we have not even thought about a rematch with Ohio State yet at all. They, they are focused on the task at hand. Whether you believe that or not, I'm going to choose to take them at face value. It sounded pretty genuine, but you got to think if they get out of Friday night. They're going to be chomping at the bit 
for round six with Ohio State because that team looks like they have loved beating the Buckeyes these last two outings. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, after the, like, the first, like, the last two matchups, like, come on. Like, both have been just really incredible. And I always love seeing Ohio State, you know, get the doors blown off them in any sport, particularly. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, in the words of Kobe Bryant, job's not finished. Mm -hmm. there, is the job finished? It's not finished yet. They still got one game left against Colgate before even thinking about playing the Ohio State Buckeyes. And th th this team's locked in, Kedrick. They are locked in. They know what they know what needs to be done, and they are ready to go and, and take care of business against Colgate. They are locked in. Let's say they advance to Sunday. Let's say it's Ohio State. I, look, if it's Clarkson, one, Clarkson is spooky. I, I, I think I will You've be said thoroughly I, I will be thoroughly spooked if shaking is, in your boots. If it is Clarkson, the, the one national championship game I have attended, Wisconsin lost to Clarkson in that one. Um but I'd rather see Clarkson as I say it now. I think it's gonna be Ohio State. You you, you got a prediction for us, Noah. How how does that potential round six rubber match there go? Come on, you already know who I'm picking. You already know who I'm picking, <laughs> baby. The Badgers. Let's go. Uh, it's. I think it's going to turn. This is going to turn into something very interesting. I, I think if Wisconsin wins this game against Colgate and they're in the national championship, I think Wisconsin comes out and they don't let Ohio State take control of this game. I think they score two goals, and I will – I don't want to throw this out here too much, but I think it's going to be 2-1. I think it's a very low-scoring game. I think Wisconsin takes care of business, and I think they beat the Buckeyes to win back-to-back -back national championships. That's what we saw in last year's national title game, a low-scoring game between two high-octane teams. Wisconsin wins that one one nothing to shut out Ohio State. The first time anybody had shut out Ohio State all season. In this year's conference tournament title game, Wisconsin had a five-goal lead on Ohio State the first time any team that has a five-goal lead on Ohio State since the calendar year of 2020. I think my one concern going into that game would be the emotions of Saturday, the day between. Wisconsin is going to have a player walk away with the Patty Kassmeyer Award for the top player in women's college hockey. They have two of the top three finalists in Kirsten Sims, who has uh, 73 points and Casey O'Brien, who has 71. Or Kirsten Sims has 74 points, rather. Um, the, the emotions that day are, are going to be tough to handle. And you have to bounce back and play Ohio State the next day, which has nobody going to that Patty Cass award ceremony. I don't know. I, I could see an emotional letdown. Um, I could see a... a upset Ohio state team come in and win that one over Wisconsin. Um, they also have just the more experienced goaltender that goes a long way in some of these matchups. You, you catch an Ava McNaughton on an, on an off day an off couple of minutes that that might just be it for Wisconsin. Uh, but I guess we will have to wait and see, you know, any final thoughts about this matchup as, we look forward to as we look forward to a potential record eighth national title. Let's get the job done. Take care of business. I mean, this is this is it. You know, this is where your season, this is where you worked for. This is what you, you you've worked for all year to mm -hmm. get to this part of the season, the frozen four. And now it's time to go take care of business and to go beat, you know, some of the best teams of the country. And I think the Badgers are more than ready to do it. I think their confidence right now is really high. And if it is the Buckeyes, like you said, the emotions could be running high for them between that day. But I also think, too, they have, you know, they've been in those situations before where they've been able to beat a team and the emotions have been super high and they've came back the next game and been able to just take care of business. We saw that in the final faceoff where they were able to beat Minnesota in overtime incredible game and then the next day 6-3 this team knows how to take care of business when it needs to and they'll take care of business this Friday and potentially take care of business this Sunday and win a record eighth 
national championship. We'll see how it goes down. And I'm sure we'll talk very soon about it all. Thanks for joining Noah. Pleasure. Thank you as always to Noah Clark for joining the show. Love talking with Noah. Been talking with Noah quite a bit lately. Um, and we'll have him back for a very brief episode. This one may be a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but good stuff on all four teams in the Frozen Four here. We'll be back briefly Saturday morning if Wisconsin wins on Friday to talk about that game and quickly preview the national title game uh, that will be played on Sunday. Sunday's national title game will be played and aired on ESPNU. So you'll have that on regular cable TV. Stay tuned to the feed. We got a whole bunch of stuff over on Badger Notes right now. Uh, you can find my new work over there in the podcast description. Latest article, all things Wisconsin hockey, a lot of Wisconsin basketball content as the Badgers aren't just in the tournament, but also a lot of transfer portal action going on right now. Uh, so stay tuned. and have a lot more to come. And if a draft coming up soon, we'll probably be breaking into that. Some Brewers baseball starts next weekend. It's huge, huge. We're going to cover it here all on the Scotty Six Pack. Thank you for starting your day with Six Pack. Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things with Scotty Sports with you six days a week. Leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments. Really does help the show. You can also watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. While you're there, subscribe, like, follow me, your host, Kedrick Stumbrist, on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrist. Until we talk to you again on Wisconsin.